Okay, so now let's go through a very basic example of creating our first collection, inserting our first vectors to it, and performing our first similarity search. We're going to be using the Quadrant Cloud Cluster that we just created and learning how to set up the entire process. Here, we're going to be using Google Colab just because it's so easy to get started and we won't have to think too much about our setup. First thing we're going to do is to install the Quadrant Client. And after that, we need to import the required modules from the Quadrant Client library, which is Quadrant Client, which we're going to use to connect with our Python client, and also models that we're going to use to get a few of the classes that we need, such as distance, vector params, and also point struct that we're going to see being used later on. After that, we need to connect with our Quadrant Cloud. We saw how we can get our cluster URL and also our API key from our Quadrant Cloud cluster in the last video. But we can see here that you just need to go to Quadrant Cloud and this is the link for our cl your cluster URL. And if you need to create a new API key, here on the bottom, you can create a new API key clicking on the Create button and just setting the name that you want. So here, we set our API key in the Secrets tab on Google Colab, and you can easily do the same just clicking on Add a New Secret and placing the name that you want for your key and also the value. So we already did that. It's right here on API key equal user data dot get API key. In this way, we can connect to our Quadrant client without sharing our API key within the cell. So let's import the libraries and also connect with our uh, cluster. You can also use the Quadrant Client in memory mode, which runs entirely in local RAM. But what happens is that you won't have any data persistence. And that means that if the system crashes, you lose everything. And you also won't get any HNSW indexing in your data. But that can work well if you don't have uh, any large data sets and you don't need any data persistence for just local testing. So we're not going to be using that now, but this is an option and obviously uh, a good option for this case where we're just going to be creating a simple first collection. Collections in Quadrant are similar to tables in a relational database, but in a relational database, you're working with structured data such as names, dates, and numbers. And in Quadrant, in your collections, you're going to be using vector data. When we are creating a collection, we need to specify at least three basic elements, which is the name of our collection. In this case, it is my first collection. And then we need to set up our vector configurations. For this, we call the vector params data structure from the models module to do that for us. Basically, we're setting our vector size to four, which is also called as the dimensionality of the vectors that we're going to use within this collection. And we're going to be using the distance metric cosine similarity. This is the most basic example of how you can set up your collection. There are many more configurations that you can add and parameters that you can use to optimize this collection for a large scale. But for now, this is everything that we need to start running our similarity search. Before we create our collection, let's first check our quadrant cluster. And here we can see that our collection page is empty. So we don't yet have any collections within our cluster. Let's now create our collection. And let's go back to our web UI to see now if we have any collections. Let's just update the page. And we can see already my first collection is in my cluster. If we click on it, we can see there's still no points inside it. We're still going to add our points to the collection, but I can already visualize it. Um, if we go back here, we can also do that within the code with the client.getCollections method. And that will show us that we have uh, one collection with my cluster, which is my first collection. That's awesome. Now let's go to the part where we actually insert the points into our collection. Points are the core data entity in Quadrant, and for now we can think of points as being primarily made up of three parts. One is the ID, which is the unique identifier of my point. Then is the vector data, which is the actual array of numerical values that represent my data points in the vector space. And then there is the payload, 
This is optional, but it is metadata in the form of key value pairs, which can be used for filtering, categorization, among other things in my searches. So here we are defining two points using the point struct data structure. And for these two points, I'm giving it an ID. I am giving it a vector, a four dimensional vector, because remember I said in my collection that the size of my vectors was gonna be four and also a payload for each one of the category of different categories. One is example and the other one is of the category demo. To upsert these vectors within my database, I can use the upsert method. And the only parameters that I need to send is the collection name and this points list that I just created. So let's do that. And let's also check in the web UI if the vectors were added to my collection. And we can see here that we already have the vectors in my collection. I can see also the payloads associated with each vector. Here, the point one, I have the category example. And for the point two, I have the category demo. I can see the length of my vectors, which is four, and other informations that later on are gonna be useful for us. We can also get this information by running uh, the same client.getCollection method that we did earlier, but now passing as a parameter the collection name so that we get the information specifically for our collection. And here we can see this status is green, and we can see also that we have two points and more information uh, about other configurations of our collection. The next step here is actually running the similarity search. Here we're trying to find the most similar vector that we have stored given a query vector. So how it works is that Quadrant compares the query vector to all my stored vectors using a distance metric that we chose and then the closest matches are returned to me. For this specific function, I'm only returning uh, the top one most similar vector. For this, I'm using the query points method and I'm passing on the collection name and the query vector that I'm defining right here. The query vector also has to be the same length as my vectors within my collection, in this case, four dimensions. So if we run this, we can see here um, that the point in my collection that is most similar to my query vector using cosine similarity is the point of ID one, which is this point right here. But what happens if I only want a point to be given back to me if it's in a certain category? For example, I only want points from the category example. I don't want any points from the category demo. For that, we can use filtered search. So we can define a filter using the filter class and we can put here that the key needs to be category and the value that we want is uh, example rather than demo. And for this, we can use the same uh, class query points, but right now we're passing besides our collection name and query vector, also the query filter which is the search filter that we just defined right here. So if we run that, we can see that the most similar point to our query vector that matches example is the uh, ID one, which is indeed the only one that we have. But if we change this example to demo and run this again, we can see here now that I get the ID number two, which is the only point also that I have that has this payload but we can see how this works. And if I search this to something else, for example, test and run this, I don't have any points with the payload test, so I don't get any results back. And this is a very interesting way in which you can start experimenting with vector search. To wrap up day zero, your task is to set up your Quadrant Cloud account, create your first project, and run your first similarity searches in Quadrant. Tomorrow in day one, we're going to get into embedding models and how they work, HNSW indexing, and learning more about quadrant configurations for your collections that can improve search performance. See you in day one.